Hey guys, today I thought I would do a video on my induction experience. I was inducted and it was by choice. Um, so I was past um, my due date and I was really uncomfortable and I wasn't sleeping so I asked to be induced. So I scheduled my induction at my 40 week appointment and so I scheduled it for 40 weeks and five days. That was the earliest they had available. What happened for me was they told me that I would get a phone call the night before and they would let me know basically if they had a bed for me or not. So labor and delivery has been very busy with births, so at least at the hospital that I was going to. So they weren't sure if they would have a bed for me or not, so they told me that they would call me on Friday night and they did. And they told me that as of right then, they thought they would have a bed for me. And so they scheduled a time for me to come in. So they told me to come in, uh, I believe it was for 10 a.m. They asked how long my commute was, and it's about an hour to the hospital that I delivered at. And so they told me that by 9 a.m., if I didn't hear anything, that my induction was good to go. But if they called me, it would have been before 9 a.m., and that's when they would have said, okay, we don't actually have a bed for you. We left on Saturday morning. It was... Saturday, February 13th, we left the house and went to the hospital and we got there right at 10 o'clock. So we went to labor and delivery and then they brought me to my room. Once we were in my room, since I was COVID negative, they did a, a test the Thursday before I, I think it's the Wednesday or Thursday before I was scheduled for my induction. Um, I had to do, go in and get tested. My test was negative. So because my test was negative, Whenever I was in the hospital room, I, I was able to have my mask removed, but like when they moved me from labor and, uh, labor and delivery to postpartum, I had to have the mask on, which is totally fine. So the whole time I was in the room, I didn't have to have my mask on, which was nice, but obviously that depends on what hospital you're at. So they admitted me in, the nurse asked me a bunch of questions, and we actually found out that we live in the same town, which is kind of funny considering it's an hour to the hospital that I went to, and there are hospitals that are closer, but she wanted to work at the one that I was at because of how nice their labor and delivery area is compared to the areas around us since we do live in a very small town. So I was being admitted, the IV team came in and there was actually a paramedic student who was watching so he got to watch as the um, IV team lady I don't know what she was exactly but she put in my IV but um, just like the port I didn't actually need any fluids or anything at that point point. and then what was really nice is that the hospital that I was at any time before they poked you they numbed you so um, before I got the IV they numbed it so I didn't even feel it it was awesome Obviously that's not necessary, but it was very nice. <laughs> About 11 a.m. they used, um, what is that called? Let me look up what it's called. I believe it's called Cytotech um, or Misoprostol. So that's a drug that they ins uh, insert up your vagina and uh, put it by your cervix, I believe. So that helps your cervix get ready and it can actually um, start your contractions too. It may not, it, and it may not work. You may have to they put it in and they wait four hours before they check you and then every four hours depending on how um, how your cervix is ripening then they um, can potentially insert another one and I can think they can do it like three or four times but it, every four hours they check basically they inserted that pill and we just got to play the waiting game for four hours I didn't have to be on an IV or anything at that point so I was able to bounce on the ball move around and Paul and I just hung out basically and talked and uh, relaxed for four hours. So before they inserted anything, I was 70% of face, two centimeters dilated. That was around 11. So I was two centimeters dilated, 70% of face. After the four hours was up, I was three centimeters dilated. And I don't remember how much uh, a face I was. I got Pitocin started. I started around four o'clock for the Pitocin. And uh, before that, I was having some contractions, and they were Ill irregular and a little too close together is what they said. So they were hoping that the Pitocin would help make them more regular. What actually happened is that the Pitocin made them very, very close together. So we they started at like a really low dose, and they can go up to like 32 of whatever this, the measurement is. And they said, this nurse said that the average is about 16. And so they started at one, I think. And then every hour they were gonna move up. I think it was something like that. Every hour they were gonna move up. But basically what happened is they would slowly move me up. And as they would move me up, my contractions would get way too close together. So my body wasn't getting a chance to rest. 
and then that's problematic because then you have no energy for pushing when you need to uh, start pushing so they they got me up to I think five or six and then they had to cut me in half because I was having way too many contractions that were way too close together they, they cut my pitocin in half around nine o'clock the contractions were getting very 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 painful I was in a lot of pain I wasn't getting a break from them they'd cut me in half they cut me in half again and I think they actually put me down to like 0.5 but my body like was reacting really strongly to the pitocin um, so for about an hour I was having extremely painful contractions that would basically not end I would have one and then I'd get like a second and then another one would start so um, they basically took me off of the Pitocin they didn't put me down I don't think to zero but they lowered it way down I think around 10 I asked for uh, my epidural so I, I wanted to feel I did want an epidural but like they asked if I wanted pain medication before that and I said no because I really wanted to feel like some of it <laughs> but I wanted for like the real deal I wanted to be able to be on the epidural uh, at like 10 p.m. I asked for the epidural and then around 11 o'clock I got the epidural after that I was able to sleep so with the epidural they have to roll you every hour so you have to switch sides you can't be on your back um, and they'd switch you from side to side and then they would also do an uh, like a temper like a cold check So they would use ice and they would start at your toes for the first one after the epidural They'd start at your toes and as long as you couldn't feel anything like they kept moving up and to see how high the epidural was working And so every time for me it was like up to here Which they don't want it any further really past that because then it goes to your brain So they would check me every single hour with the ice and roll me and flip me every hour And like I could not move my legs like I could wiggle I can't remember which foot but I could wiggle the toes On one of my feet but I couldn't like move them And so they would have to like roll me every single time But so from 11 till I think 4 I was able to sleep uh, obviously not the greatest but I was able to sleep and then I actually felt pretty well rested and then at one point I remember the nurse coming in and um, she put something in my IV so I, I was on the drip for Pitocin oh and then at 10 p.m. when they did when I asked for the epidural they have to put a bag of fluid in you before they'll give you the epidural so from 10 to 11 I had the bag of fluid put in but then in the middle of the night I remember waking up to the nurse putting in another medication through my IV so I asked her like what she was doing and um, my baby's heart rate was either I can't remember if because babies can have a reaction to the epidural I can't remember if her heart rate was too fast or too slow but it was one or the other and so they use this medication and it worked thank goodness so they did that and then at 4 a.m. the midwife came in they actually broke my water at 6 o'clock I could feel a lot of pressure when they checked me at 4 I was 6 centimeters dilated and so we really just wanted to let my body keep doing its job I was barely on any Pitocin at 9 a.m. I was like oh, okay I feel the urge to poop like that and that's what they told me is when you feel like you have to push to poop like that's when it's, you're getting close um, at 9 a.m. I felt that urge and so I told them and they said okay you've got two options you can start pushing now or you can wait an hour let the labor progress more and so I asked them like what do you think would be best they said to probably wait an hour let my body progress even more and get even more ready so waited an hour um, I was 10 centimeters dilated and 100% effaced everything was ready and so at 10 a.m. I started pushing with my nurse. I was just Paul and the nurse and they were each holding my feet and I was pushing. I was doing lots of practice pushes and then at some point there was actually two midwives on duty. There was one that was training. Uh, she had delivered lots and lots of babies has been doing it for like 30 years but she was new to this hospital and then there was the one who was training her and the one who was training her was actually her daughter so I thought that was kind of funny that she was training her mom in the ways of our hospital um but the one who was being trained she came in at one point and she said that her daughter was still finishing up another delivery they had delivered the baby but it sounded like the mom had a lot of um needed a lot of repairs after the birth and so 
she was gonna be caught up for a while and I was ready to like push a baby out like there was no stopping me she had to go ask her daughter like can I deliver this baby because she hadn't delivered a baby at our hospital yet she had to ask her daughter like can I deliver this baby on my own or do I need someone there to watch me and she needed someone there to watch her so let me go get her so I've got her here now she's going to be six weeks old on Sunday today is Friday yeah it will be so big so basically she would not be able to deliver her on her own she needed somebody there and so sorry she likes to move around a lot um so she had to go get the OBGYN that was on call and so oh no she got the OBGYN I had her at 11 36 and it was a wonderful experience I was actively push I was pushing for between practice pushing and um, actively pushing for an hour and 36 minutes before she was born and I definitely do not regret being induced it was awesome um, not having to deal with going into labor at work and I had great nurses all the nurses were amazing the midwife was awesome she was super sweet I did have a first degree tear but it healed up really well and yeah so that was my experience with my induction. If you are getting induced, um, there's nothing to be scared of. People always try and scare you with everything when you're having a child, whether it's your pregnancy or your birth or raising a kid, people always like to scare you. And my experience was wonderful. Obviously everyone's experience is different. My experience was wonderful being induced. And so, um, well, oh, you're beeping. yeah it was a wonderful experience i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any other questions you can feel free to leave them down below i'm planning on doing like some new other newborn videos like a newborn morning routine newborn nighttime routine that kind of stuff um newborn essentials so if there's any other video requests that you guys have please leave them down below and i'll see you guys for my next video so you guys want to see her yeah. she's got pretty bad baby acne right now so we're working on clearing that up and she just got a bath today so her hair is extra fluffy but this is the little miss <laughs> she's huge she's ginormous she's a chunk yeah this is baby luella yeah <laughs> but i hope you guys enjoyed the video we'll see you for our next one